All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Emma Void's Let's Play of Pyre. So, last we left off, we had won in our match against um, the dog guy, Dalbert. Dalbert? Dogbert? Can't remember. Doesn't matter. Um, oh, Tizo. Tizo is apparently feeling a bit unfortunate, so we might want to have a chat with him. Um, in the meantime, though, we've got one more right until the next liberation right. And uh, I think we decided we we're going up against the chastity, maybe? I'm not sure exactly. So let's see what Tizo's up to. You find Tizo there in the black wagon, looking rather more despondent than usual. When you attempt to reach out to him, he barely acknowledges you. Tizo indicates that he wishes to be left alone right now. Oh, you almost run into Bay as you turn to leave. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. I was just wanting to come check on little Tizo there. I think maybe he's taken ill or something? On further inspection, it occurs to you that Bay perhaps is not off the mark and that Tizo is unwell for some reason. Come on, Tizo. You're going to be alright. You might be the smallest one of us, but I think you're the toughest. Though, Mr. Dario, I think she's very tough as well. <laughs> Tizo appreciates the kind words, but still wishes to be left alone at this time. Oh, don't be silly, Tizo. You know I won't be doing that, don't you? Bay turns to you for a moment, lowering her voice. Um, miss, I think Tizo would like a little bit of privacy if you don't mind, though I don't mean to be rude. It's just Tizo, well, I told him not to eat something. There was this, well, I think it was a mushroom, maybe, growing in the corner over there? So, I see Tizo sniffing at it, and he's always hungry, and usually I try to feed him, but this time I told him no. Because I know my mushrooms, and whatever that was, I think it was a mushroom, but it wasn't one I knew. So, well, Tizo ate it anyway. <laughs> Tizo corroborates Bay's recollection of what happened. <laughs> Poor guy. So, um, anyway, I think that he's going to maybe, um, well, cough it up, I guess? I think maybe any moment now? Because when I ate things I thought were mushrooms around here, I coughed them up as well. They made me rather sick, kind of like Tizo over there. I hope that I'm not being inappropriate, because it's not polite, maybe? Oh, come to think of it, Tizo, why don't we go outside? Because then I won't have to clean up after you, like the last time when you ate something I said maybe you shouldn't, remember? Tizo indicates he remembers full well and regrets not heeding Bay's food-related counsel. Bay's pretty smart when it comes to food, apparently. Oh, don't worry, silly. If you've taken ill, then I think you're going to be fine. Once you have a little walk outside with me, because you're very tough. Tizo's beginning to look better already. You're my best friend, Tizo. I won't let anything bad happen to you. Or at least, I'll try, okay? I don't think anyone could stop you from eating things, though. Then she snatches Tizo up in her arms and whisks him out of the wagon with her. You hear her call back to you over, your, over her shoulder. Bye, miss! I'll make sure that Tizo is alright, I promise, okay? Although the prospect of Bay administering medical assistance normally would give you pause, Tizo seemed to accompany her willingly enough. The two have shared a rather close bond since Bay first made contact with the group. For someone like her, who has lived alone for so long, the friendship must be vital. And, as for Tizo, he must be impressed that a non-native of the downside seems to know her way around food safety even better than he. Well, that was certainly interesting. Oh right, while we're here, what is this? Singing Sands. Interesting. Right, do we have anything else of... <laughs> no. Okay. Let's check on Sandra. No, still nothing for us to do. So, that's alright. I suppose we'll just continue on our way then. And off we go. The Pit of Malik is right there. I totally missed it. Um, is anything up here to check out, maybe? Nah. Okay, so 
you've got three options of where to go. Cold Moat, base senses the presence of the eight scribes along this route. Plague Mont, Jadariel suspects he may find something of value. Or Fallowfield, Tizo expressed an interest in taking this route. Hmm. Let's go with Bay. And I guess we will walk the eight scribes' path. You and Bay wander together for a while through the poison lands of Coldmo, sometimes in circles. What exactly she's looking for, she cannot explain. Eventually, however, she happens on something that never caught your notice. Look at this, look at this, miss. The scribes, they walked this very path, I think they did, and left this here for us. The object she procures does seem to emanate with some sort of faint and ancient power. Wisdom trace. Consumable. Oh wow. Grants 1000 enlightenment. Those sensitive to the presence of the eight scribes may see traces of them here and there. Interesting. So that'll help us to level somebody up pretty quickly. Um, let's see. Current enlightenment. Okay, so I'll probably wind up using on, I don't know, Bertrude or Gilman, maybe. We'll figure that out in a bit. Alright. Hmm? Here in the darkest corners of flagging hands, you encounter a messenger imp come to deliver news and rumors from the other side. The news this time pertains to Hedwin, whom you liberated at the fall of Solium. You learn Hedwin returned safely to the Commonwealth, where he was clothed and welcomed, his past transgressions all forgiven. He was to be groomed for a leadership position of his choice, whether on the Council or the Blood Border, each equally as lucrative and secretive as well. However, he refused, and before the stunned Council members could do anything about it, he left them. He since made contact with Wolfred's agents and is working together with them. Thus, the ranks of the revolution grow stronger. Per the messenger in custom, the last part of the message was transcribed from Hedwin, word for word, and says, Keep going. I'll see you here. You thank the messenger in for relaying this information. Soon, your companions are all abuzz about it. A glorious example Hedwin sets for us all! Well done, Hedwin, my boy. I knew you could do it. <laughs> he did it. Here! Yeah. Tizo's happy to hear Hedwin as well, back in the Commonwealth. I always thought Hedwin was looking for someone out there back home. Do you think he found her? May that the boy's spirit infect the lot of ye as with a plague. Wonder if he'll ever find the one he fell for. The news of Hedwin's liberation fills you and your fellow exiles with newfound resolve. Plus one hope. Nice. I'm glad Hedwin's doing well. Check out the hey, slug market. Boy. Hey guys, come on in. Say now, whatever happened to that smiley headwind guy? Did he really get out of here like I've been hearing or what? Yeah, he did. Let's see. <laughs> 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 Alright. Bye, Tyson. Okay, so. Get us some stardust. Guaitais. yeah. See you guys again sometime soon, maybe, okay? Because I gotta say, you are my favorite customers I had all week. Alright. Once more, you have returned to the pit of Malith, and your companions stand ready beneath a still night sky, awaiting the commencement of the rites. You overhear some of their words to one another as you await the signal in the stars. He said we have to fight the, ch the chastity tonight. Surely there is honor to be gained in this. Just then, you observe a glint of starlight that begins to shine above, and your compa companions soon fall silent. I'm wondering if we're actually going to be going up against them. Oh, hey. Uh, 
Shark's six shoulders. Adversary is all in turn from banishment when all are banished. Ooh, that's nasty. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother. Thanks. <laughs> Supposedly we're going up against the Chastity, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're up against what's his face again. You exiles of the Night Wings. The eight scribes summon you to the pit of Melilla. The triumvirate you stand against shall be the Chastity. Hmm? Whose ever fire yet burns ere the break of dawn shall surge forward. On the path to glory! Now prepare yourselves! Oh. Ah, yeah, there he is. Oh, but look at this! Are you perhaps intent upon humiliating us even more after last time? I'll have you know that we have some new tricks up our sleeves this time. Your adversaries are prepared, reader. Who shall conduct the rites on your behalf? Smirch, the Nightwing's name. Hey, rude. What a trick. Alright, let's take a look at these guys. So, Manly's still not the highest level. Star Splinter. What else is he bringing with him? Okay. So let's see. Next time we go, which is gonna be you, you shut up! <sighs> Stupid voice. Next time we go to the Liberation Rite, I think I wanna send Jadariel up next. I wanna get the first three out of here. But so I'm definitely gonna want her to be a high enough level. But who else do I want to send along in that? Well, I definitely want to level up Volfred some since he's pretty wimpy at this point. And who else was I considering? Sir Gilman's kind of low level too. Okay, let's maybe see if we can't get Jadariel up to level 5. Before we're done here. So let's see, where was that? Ah. Oh. Can't use them? Wisdom trace cannot be used now? Oh. Whoops. <laughs> ah. Well, that's unfortunate. Anywho. So I'm gonna go with Jadariel. Full friend. What have I got him with? Right. The webbed lanthorn. And maybe Sir Gilman. Let's maybe level up Gilman's talisman. You know, I bet that would be an interesting combo. Let's put those together. Alright, so we'll give him the Bottled Void, so I'll pull in adversaries when he gets banished, and then as soon as he gets banished, a sapling pops up. Oh no, that's near the pyre. Eh. Okay, maybe not. Never mind, I thought I was being clever. Okay, 
go with the lanthorn again. Volfred. Jodariel. Sir For the glory of the Nightwings! Are you quite ready then, hmm? Well then, let us get this little ceremony started. Sandalwood? Why is it really you, my dear friend? You must be mistaking me for someone else, Manly. However do you mean? I'd recognize that upright posture of yours from anywhere. I knew it had to be you. Oh, what a glorious surprise indeed. No, oh, it's me, all right. But you're no friend of mine, Manly. No more than I am yours. So cut your nonsense for a, chan for a change and face me like a proper sap. Oh, to have such spark left in these old limbs of yours. Well, if you want me to be rude, then fine. Let's have it your way, sir. That manly tinder staff has such a mind for politics. Would that he focused on the rights. Ah, crud. Sinners! Alas. Ah. So close. Take your time, I don't mind. Nope. 
for the chastity. Oh, come on. Is fair a little better. Oh, shut up, voice. Such a jerk. The right is complete. Alright. Why you? You dare defy and defer my rightful freedom? You obstruct true progress by defeating us. Yeah, yeah. Always is there greater knowledge to be gained. After you bested the chastity, in spite of almost having lost, there is little time for you to rest as yet. The night beckons, and the next rite reveals itself to be a vital one. It is already time, reader. Come see for yourself. The coldness of the season now presents to us another chance. He heads out straight away, and you follow him in turn. Indeed, among the remaining stars, you see one with which you are, no you are familiar now burns ever brightly. And who are we possibly up against? Dissidents. What are we looking at here? Okay. Already are the night wings summoned back to Mount Elodia. Picture the rites as a wheel broken free from a black wagon. It is turning uncontrollably, and soon shall reach a sudden stop. We should have several chances left for someone to go free, either us or else our adversaries, but not both. What is at stake each time is further complicated now, I must admit, knowing we have so few opportunities remaining. Those whom we send back into the Commonwealth, should our plan somehow fail, they may look back upon their exile with fondness. Oof. So, returning to the Commonwealth is not inherently a mercy, I don't think. Moreover, there are also those among us whom we, we count on to prevail in the rites. We need them on the Night Wings just as much as we need them in the Commonwealth. We cannot simply grow our numbers here, given the circumstances. And so, who stays, who goes, these choices affect us all. 
No pressure there, my girl. Now, I don't know about you, but I shall go and take my leave for now. Let's set forth again at daybreak. Alright. Well, we've got a bit further, a bit longer to, uh... Basically, this I don't want this episode to be too short, so let's do a little more. Um, pick some fruit and some mushrooms. Come on. There we go. And then let's chat with Judy. You approach Jodario, who seems to be busy explaining something to Sir Gilman. And so, fainting left against them proves to be reliable. They all lead with their right wings when they choose to strike. They are quick, but can leave themselves quite vulnerable. Such sage counsel, madam! This knight feels most emboldened should he ever again be forced to confront the high wing remnants in single combat! <laughs> Pray you never shall. Being here, I suppose it is unlikely. She notices you then. Reader, the good knight and I were just comparing survival strategies we picked up on the blood border. Reminiscing on old times, it could be called. Indeed! The good Jodaria has volunteered to become this knight's master at arms, should we ever achieve our liberty together, and this knight humbly accepted. What? I said no such thing. I owe you nothing, worm. Ah, but the finest lessons are the harshest made, madam. This knight is overjoyed that you would thusly train him as your protege. Reader, spare me, please. You somehow managed to steer the subject back to military tactics. This knight is most impressed with your familiarity with the finer points of being sliced to ribbons by the high-wing remnants, Master Rita. Sir Gilman and Jodario continue the conversation for some time. You sense they are in relatively good spirits, all things considered. Well, good. Still no more chances to chat with Sandra. I'm a little worried about her. I hope she's gonna be okay. And off we go. <laughs> uh, that was horrible when <laughs> I had to do it. I don't know. Maybe we pick them up and don't just squish them on accident. That's what I'm going to go with. Don't mind me, just searching for anything else of interest. Oh. Wow, we're going... No, okay. I was about to say, we're going straight to the fall? No, there's just a point of interest up here. Once more, we sail above the fall of Solium. The temple to the eight scribes awaits us at the summit. None have seen the temple, save for those worthy to conduct the rites there, and myself, and my counterpart Celeste. You may, then, wonder whence it came. The cycle of the rites has turned since the beginning of this age. Over its course, whilst we're waiting for the cycle's turns, some exiles thus paid tribute to the eight scribes. I think the scribes may not have wanted such extravagance, or the carved effigies to them along the way, yet it is for triumvirates to decide how best to honor the rites. And they chose to honor them as you see here. How you remember this, of course, whether you even wish to do so, that is yours to decide. The scribes would not want otherwise. Alright. So, once again, we've got Emperor's Descent or Emperor's Fall. Um, Bertrude will get favor from over there. Ah, but Jody gets favor from the Ascent, so... You make landing upon Mount Elodiel, where Volfred pulls you aside while the others complete the post-flight inspection. He puffs at his pipe before speaking up. Reader, as you know, I now wear the raiments once again. This means that I myself may soon be worthy to regain my freedom in the eyes of the eight scribes. No, however, that it is not my wish to go just yet. It is true I could be of some benefit to our plan back in the Commonwealth, but I feel my place is here for the time being. Perhaps once the Nightwings are on a surer, f a surer footing in their path, my time shall come. And those are my feelings on the matter, and I wanted you to know. I shall, of course, defer to you. Our path is not to contradict the reader's will. Anyway, 
I trust that all of us, yourself included, shall find our freedom. If not soon, then by when all of this is over. Yeah, hopefully. Fingers crossed, right? Having completed the post-fight inspection, you and Jodario visit the monuments of Trieste Titus here in Emperor's Ascents. A few scribes are quite predictable, and the others were naive to think opportunities at freedom were indefinite. So, now we have to make the most of every chance, is that not so? I fail to see how that is any different than before. Soon she has finished paying her respects. You return to the wagon in silence, feeling as though Trieste Titus has shown you favor. You soon shall ascend the mountain, though there is time now to pursue your vocations. Plus one quickness. And vocations. Well, first, let's chat with Jody. You find your dial seemingly deep in thought. You consider whether even to bother her. <laughs> your presence is not unwelcome, reader. Remain a moment, please. She stares at you for some time. Today marks the beginning of my sixteenth year in exile. You look back at her and remain silent. You sense that all she wants from you right now is for you to listen. And I have kept count. Put notches in this breastplate of mine for each passing day. Notice how much it is frayed. Sixteen years, Rita. The orphans whom I fostered would be long since fully grown. Some of them are likely gone. Many of them spoke of how they longed to one day serve with me on the blood border. Sometimes I cannot help but wonder. If I, was, if I still were captain, could I have protected them? Could I have made a difference? I think not. The Commonwealth and the High Wing Remnants, they have fought eternally. Those such as I have come and gone throughout the age. I catch myself feeling pity for my years, but then, had I remained there on the blood border, it is unlikely I would have lived to see this day. She looks at you again. Do you know why they cast me down? I was a decorated captain. They said I was the best. She closes her eyes for a moment before she continues. One day, it was a standard patrol, but I ran across a pack of harp fledglings, fully armed and preparing for a strike, but all on their own. They were nothing for my regiment. We ensnared them all and took them in, a considerable prize. They were not yet conditioned and could be made to talk. When the order came down that they were to be executed, I could not bring myself. The Commonwealth, priding itself on mercy, committing such acts through one such as me, it was unconscionable. So I thought then, at least in my younger years, I let the damned birds go. I made no claims as to the contrary and turned myself in. I was cast down the following week, sixteen years ago. Thus my enemies had the last laugh in that exchange. If I were faced with the same choice again today, I do not know for certain that I would have chosen just the same. Now then, I shall go and mark this occasion as I have always done. Be well, reader. She heads out of the wagon alone. Oof. Jody, that is rough. Alright, insubordination for not killing a bunch of kids. That's, uh... Yeah. Anywho, could forge for resources or a mentor companion. Do you maybe want to mentor somebody? Where are we at? It might be. Yeah, it would probably be enough to get Jody up to max. I think she'll get up to max from the next fight, anyways. So let's maybe focus on somebody else. Um, I mean. I don't know, maybe Volfred. He's really low level compared to everybody. Mm. Or alternatively, we could forage. Mm. Mm. Let's forage. Let's see. Scribe monuments. You sense a potent serum here. Or frozen hills. Something Falcon Ron values here. Let's go with that. Ah. Glowing Shard. Something you forged in Mount Lodio. Neat. Alright, cool. Let's see, to the high road where Bale gained favor. Or 
Sir Gilman. Uh, let's go with Sir Gilman. He's also one of the lower level ones, and we really should boost him a bit as well. On route to the mountaintop, you pass by a monument to Under King Oris, and Sir Gilman happens to take notice. It seems that this knight's test of honor is just beginning to begin. He is to understand the stars themselves are vanishing. Impossible, he says, for how can there be such a thing as honor in this world if the stars themselves are wont to leave this world behind? Soon he has finished paying his respects. As you prepare to continue your ascent, you sense that Under King Oris has shown him favor. Plus three glory. Nice. You and your fellow exiles gather at the foot of Scribe's Gate before an archway carved with stone where stands the Gate Guardian. Greetings to you, Celeste. I see the exiles of the Nightwings have returned, even as the cycle of the rites begins drawing to a close. The Nightwings accept this as the will of the scribes. The Gate Guardian laughs at this softly for some reason. And you, Tariq, do you accept their will as well? But the lone minstrel does not answer her. It is no matter. Now, Nightwings, each of you come forth and state what, is, what it is you seek whilst crossing Scribe's Gate. One by one, the Nightwings declare themselves. You all pass through as before. When Fulford takes his turn, Celeste stops him. You, I see you wear the raiments once again. Explain. The cycle of the rites is ending. Well, I do not know exactly why, I have my fears. One of my contemporaries, he who fell from the summit long ago, he lives and seeks his liberty again. He stands against us now and believes his triumvirate to be the true Nightwings. I remember well the contemporary whom you mean then. Men. I got mixed up. I remember well the contemporary whom you mean. Then the Nightwings stand divided. Yes, and so I wear the raiments once again, in case that it may help to right this wrong. For I am Wolfred Sandalwood, and I seek liberty for each of us, so that one day we all might stand shoulder to shoulder on the other side, and bring our freedom to the people there. She considers Wolfred's words for a moment. I see. Then move along. The Guardian of Scribes Gate regards you all, and then beckons you onward. The eight scribes bid the Nightwings welcome. Go forth with glory. Celeste. What is it, Tariq? In the will of the scribes. Long have we both followed it, I think you would agree. In equal measure has it drawn us close as separated us. But if their aim now is to keep us apart for another age or longer, then... No, I do not accept their will. You blaspheme, Tariq, and at the gate, no less. But the lone minstrel simply puts his hat back on. Then may the scribes themselves admonish me. Until tomorrow night, Celeste. Well, that's definitely interesting. Having reached the peak of Mount Elodiel again, you see the vastness of the downside all around you. It leaves you deep in thought regarding which of your companions ought to go free this night, as Hedwin did the last time. Alright. Well, that's all for today's episode, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to come back next time for our next Liberation Rite, and uh, so we can check out what's up to fa up with Falcon Ron at the Slug Market and who wants to chat in the Black Wagon. Um, don't forget, if you like, if you enjoyed this episode, you can always leave a comment or subscribe to my channel or even check down in the doobly-doo. You'll find my Patreon and my PayPal and you can send me some money that way if you want to, you know, support me and help me make more videos like this. Um, either way, I hope you all come back next time and until then, be good. Be good to each other, and even though some people out there are bad, it's important to be good anyways. Because, you know, other people suck. And screw them. They can suck all they want. You guys be awesome. Bye!